Hello and welcome to the May WorkRight webinar. This month we are going to focus on our product accident management system uh, or AMS for short. AMS is an online facility that allows you to manage your accident and incident reporting across multiple sites including a structured and reportable method of investigation and action planning. With me I have Brian Church, our WorkRight sales manager who has been at PostureRight for over eight years and is responsible for the growth and development of the WorkRight division. So Ryan, over to you. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, yeah, um, this month we're taking you through, uh, as Chris has mentioned, our, our accident management system. And uh, as with all of our software products, it is, is a web-hosted tool. And as with everything else we do, is got a, a huge level of flexibility to make sure it sort of fits around uh, various customers' needs. This one in particular is the most flexible and, and really does go through a uh, quite an involved implementation process with customers to make sure we're asking uh, the relevant types of questions to meet a company's sort of procedures in line with their accidents, incidents, and even other subjects such as sort of security matters, first aid, and the like. So. Um, I'll, I'll take you through sort of the process of recording an incident, uh, sorry, reporting an incident, um, administration features whereby investigations can take place, action plans. I won't go into too much detail about the, the various different administration features because that's, as I say, is all, all dealt with at implementation, but I'll give you a taster of, of how the tool sort of looks and works. Um, it's all about the features and the benefits, uh, so please do ask your questions and we'll go through those at the end. But this presentation shouldn't take more than sort of 15, 20 minutes top to take you from start to finish. Um, and as I say at the end, we'll, we'll cover your various different questions. So getting to this page here, this is the, the AMS homepage. Um, now because I'm logged in as an administrator, I've got my administration button here on the bottom left and I've got my reports, which I'll come on to later on. However, if I was an end user and I was just being asked to, to report any type of incident, injury, near miss, um, various different questions, I would simply see these top two buttons here, report an incident and view incidents. View incidents would only show me um, the incidents that I had personally previously recorded or reported, or if I was in the system as with any level of administration, my view incidents list would show me anything that I have been allocated responsibility for investigating. But I will come back to that in a moment um, because it's worth sort of saying at this point now, it's it, getting to this page is different for all of our customers. The majority of people will have a, a, a link in their intranet or so, somewhere on the internal networks which will take them to this particular system. And there's a single sign-on feature which will automatically log them in so there's no need for them to populate their own details. However, there's alternative options if you don't have that IT um, resource internally to set up single sign-on. We do have manual processes as well, but this is following the process whereby I'm already logged into the accident management system. So, let's imagine I'm an end user. I've Something's happened. Um, in this example, it's an incident where I've fallen off a, um, a, a meter high object. Um, the detail of that isn't vitally important, but it's the process that we're looking to, to go through here. So, the, the process is I've clicked on my link to get to AMS, I'm then going to report an incident. Now, this is where it's worth pointing out that these subjects and the questions that I am asking the end user to fill in uh, the whole way through the process, they are entirely co uh, configurable to a customer's needs. We start this presentation with six distinct question sets, incident with injury, dangerous occurrence, near miss, work-related illness, work-related absence and reportable disease. You with your system, should you want to use this, you wouldn't need to have all of those, and you, but you, you're welcome to have the standard question sets with yours in addition, or you can have a completely bespoke set of questions. We actually have one customer we implemented this system with recently, whereas rather than having six quest different question sets, they've actually got nearly, I think it's 20 or 21 different question sets. And to help the end user understand what, the, which, what each question set covers, we have this little question mark which it just details what that process is going to be asking them or which one they should be selecting. Another example of, of, of what customers like to try and report, as I said previously, we've got here our accident type, um, accidents and near misses processes, but security and first aid question sets are, are also have customers using it for those processes as well. But for this presentation, I'm going to take you through an incident with an injury. So. By clicking on the option there, it takes me into the first of a number of pages of information gathering. Now, because I'm already logged into the tool, it's recognizing that my first name is admin, my surname is account, um, my 
job title is a health and safety officer and the details of my address are here as well. Now, on this particular system we've made every single field mandatory. We don't need to make the fields mandatory in your system but it actually depends on what you're looking to achieve uh, through the process. I've, tried, I've clicked next and you can see here that two of the options do not have anything, anything in the field so if I just populate that with a number and also the type of business we are posturite. Um, I'm then able to take myself to the next page which is the details of the incident. Um, what's the date today? We're looking at it's the day after voting day, 8th of May and I'm not going to attempt fate because I'm recording an incident with an injury so we're 12.30 now so I'll say this incident happened at 12 o'clock. Um, this process here, where did the incident occur? At this premises, if I was to click on elsewhere in the organization, we can uh, populate a system with a, a drop down list of options of various different addresses within the company that I'm working for. Um, but for this demonstration, let's go to at these premises, and I'm currently on the first floor. Now, remember, this is just the process we're asking the end user to complete. So I've already mentioned some of these fields can be made mandatory or non mandatory. Um, the reason you would potentially make some of the fields not mandatory is because you want to encourage as much information being recorded or the people getting as far through the process with the information they have as possible. Now if somebody was to, let's not do me, let's do an employee, if somebody was to complete this process and every single field was mandatory and they didn't have a particular piece of information, potentially they're going to stop at that particular point. So if I say Chris is the person that we're recording this for, I won't put address details in, it's just to make sure there's something in each field. You notice here that age is not going to get away with a T, but today, as every day, I'm going to be 21. And uh, it's Chris here actually, so Chris, you're 21, I hope you don't mind. Um, if I take you through to the next screen, the this is going to be t talking about the injury. So, as I said before, um, we're doing a, somebody's fallen off a a uh, particular height, so I'm going to say Chris bless him has fractured his right ankle and I'd say it's going to be a major injury just for the classification. Date of commencement today and did the person become unconscious, need resuscitation, remain in hospital for more than 24 hours, um, we don't know any of these just yet so I'm going to answer none of the above. Um, which then takes me on to the next page about the accident. Now, this list is manageable in the administration suite. So if you did have a particular type of accident that was happening more often than not, and you rather than having everything put in the subject of other, we, we have some customers that are putting in here um, road traffic accidents or something specific or um, forklift truck accidents, something specific to their environment. So this, as it's a list, is, is manageable by the administrator. But as I mentioned before, this is going to be a fell from a height, and you'll notice there that it opened up a box saying fall from a height, how many meters? Just the one meter. Next page is a very simple what happened here. So please provide a detailed account of what happened. A number of our customers, they like to be more specific in what they're requesting here. This box is a free text box. It has a, um, a maximum of just over 1,200 characters. That is... Um, expandable should it need to be, but a number of our customers, they like to be very specific with what they're asking their end users to complete. So they would say things like, your description must include uh, details of uh, the environment, the as much about the incident as possible, and maybe the person's job number, uh, payroll number, as, as I say, specific to the individual. So um, I'm just going to say, fell from a height, uh, cleaning a window. Now, that's the simple end users process. What we've um, basically come to here, this is a summary of what's been recorded. Now, the first page was in the instant details. It's automatically generated a reference code. The incident type, I decided this was an incident with an injury. The date, the status, is currently the status have entered. And it's currently allocated to not allocated to anybody because I haven't done that just yet. The second screen is taking me through my details. If I needed to edit that I can click on uh, the top of the tab there. It takes me back to that page so I can edit my details here. Then the next page with incident details, same again if there's anything that needs to be changed that can be edited. 
person involved and then I've got about the injury. Now you notice here that uh, date returned from absence. I don't know that date just yet so I'm able to um, save this incident without putting that date in and I'll come back to that in the investigation process shortly. Next page was about the accident and I can see here that the, the free text I put in was simply fell from a height and we know the height is one meter and a full description of, of what happened here. Fell from height, cleaning a window. Incident history, this is automatically building so today's date at 12.35 the admin account, that's my name, created the incident and it's currently uh, the status of the incident is entered. So I'm still in, this, in the status here of an end user recording um, what's happened. I hereby declare that all the information is correct and I can then allocate this particular incident to any number of people within the system. Now we've got a couple of customers that are using this with multiple sites and this is ideally sort of su uh, suited for customers with, with multiple sites and they have, uh, one company in particular have got 13 different locations so they have simply got 13 different names on that allocate to list and each person is responsible for a different location. It depends entirely on your resources, on your processes and um, how, how you want the tool to be set up but I'm going to allocate this to the admin account for the purposes of demonstration and the two options you have are confirm and notify, which basically is save as complete, um, or save details without confirmation. Now this button will be checked simply if um, it saves it without confirming it. Maybe I've got some more information that as the end user I want to be um, filling in later on. I'm not going to okay that. I'm going to cancel that because I want to confirm and notify because I'm happy that all the information I've recorded is correct and accurate. So if I confirm and notify, it repeats that uh, the reference ID or incident reference number there. I can see it's been um, the manager under whose responsibility this incident falls. That is their manager or the person responsible for the investigation. So that is the end user's process or responsibility completed. I don't want to go back to the summary. I'm going to take you back to the main menu. Okay, so the example we're in now. Um, I'm now the, the, the person responsible for investigating or at least responsible for, for seeing if there is an investigation needed for this uh, incident that's been reported. So I as that person would have received an automatic notification to say you are responsible for investigating something. Uh, they would then, I would then need to go to the system, click on the um, uh, your instance and then I can see the top of the list that Chris Jones it's been reported by this person here, it's been allocated to myself here, the current status is confirmed. Now I want to see if this needs an investigation. So by clicking on the, uh, the reference, the instant reference, I'm now taken to the same summary that the end user would have seen, but you'll notice that I'm not able to edit any of the, the reporting information here. I'm not in, this, in the tool at the moment now to, to change the, the reporting, I'm now here to see if it requires an investigation. However, you notice the point I referenced earlier, if I now knew the date the person had returned to work, I can potentially put that date in. I'm going to just change that, uh, put that in, returning to work on Monday. Alright, so I've read down this as the person that is responsible for looking at, uh, into the incident in more detail. But this element at the bottom, the, the time stamping in the history, this is building. So I can see that at the 1235 that's when it was created it was the currently the status oh, currently the status of entered it was then saved and entered to conf change status from entered to confirmed and it was then allocated to the uh, admin account to investigate that's the stage we're at at the moment there's my summary and you'll see the tabs across the top of the page maybe I'm not the right person this person sh uh, this instance should be allocated to so I can reallocate it to another individual I can, after having read the summary below, decide that there's nothing to be investigated so I can set as closed. I can start an investigation which is what I'll take you through shortly, print a summary, back to the main menu or I can upload documents. Now uploading documents, it could be anything that's, that's relative to the reporting of, the investigating of, anything to do with this incident, maybe some risk assessments, maybe in, in sort of worst case scenarios, sort of doctor's notes and various different other accident reports if they're relevant to this particular incident. However, or whatever you need to report or record, you can attach those documents here. But I've looked at this and I've decided I do actually need to start an investigation. So I'm going to click on the start investigation button. Now this is going to 
put me into three very, very simple but very effective slides. First question, first page is asking me, please enter details of any injury, illness or loss sustained. Again, free text box, so I'm just simply for the purposes of presentation. Um, here we go. Injury sustained. Just so I've got some text in there, you can see how this presents on the final page. Please give details of any direct causes that led to the incident occurring. Now, as I mentioned previously with these pretext bo free text boxes, a number of our customers do like to populate the guidance notes on the left-hand side with far more information which is pertinent to the, the types of questions they want to ask at the investigation stages. So whilst we've got a, a, a very short, concise, please give details of any direct causes, that wording can be elaborated on should you need us to. So I'm going to just drop in my investigation here, direct causes. Last screen, please give details of any indirect causes. You'll probably notice, um, recognize a number of these, uh, a number of the, the wording from uh, I can't type and talk at the same time, bear with me. There are causes. Uh, the recognize the wording from the HSC, from various different riddle processes. Uh, there's a particular reason for that. Um, originally, the accident management system was um, built to identify riddle incidents. And I'll come into a bit more detail in that in a, in a moment. Were there any witnesses to this incident? If I was to say yes, it gives me the option to put in the person's details, so I'm going to say that uh, Matt Smith, a witness's address. Okay, now this will pick up various different addresses within the system, and you can select from there. I can add further witnesses should I need to, but for the processes here, I currently don't have any other witnesses, so I'm just going to see if there's any actions required. If there are no actions for this particular incident, obviously you click on no action, but I want to create an action for this particular one. Now Chris fell from a height on this particular um, problem, so I'm going to say there's some working from height training required. Now who do I decide I'm going to allocate this responsibility to, or this action to? I've gone back a page. Uh, bear with me. Sorry, I clicked the back button accidentally there. So, working from height, training. And that can now be allocated to anybody on the system. Now, this is showing me everybody that's within the tool. Now, just because they're not responsible for investigating, they may be responsible for the action. So, let's make um, Stephen Lee responsible for completing this action. Target date for completion. Friday next week, and if Stephen doesn't complete that within three days of that date, Stephen's going to start receiving automatic reminders saying, Stephen, you haven't done what's required of you within the tool. Uh, current status, not started, and save. If there's further actions, I will create them there. If not, I'll go to next. And what I'm now, take, uh, now seeing, bottom of the page, this is the previous summary. This is, that has not changed. That's the same summary we had beforehand. You'll notice the incident history is building, so admin account changed the status to investigation. But at the top of the page, this is my investigation. Okay, now the reason for the investigation be, being at the top of the page rather than the summary is because it's the investigation at this stage that we're interested in. So I can see the same incident reference, um, the incident details that I've recorded, injury sustained, added by admin account, direct causes, indirect causes. These are my notes that are there. Now at this stage, you may want somebody else to investigate further. Maybe there's more detail required. So I would click on reallocate and I can allocate the incident to anybody else in the system. They would then receive notification through AMS, an email notification, and they would come to this same page and they would look through the investigation notes and potentially want to add something else. So if I add a second note, I can then I can see the previous note there. I can click next. Any further witnesses? No. Any further actions? I can create a further action. But equally, I can just come straight back to the investigation screen. And what I'm seeing here, indirect causes was my first note added by admin account. I obviously haven't allocated this to a different person, but in the example here, add second note was added by 
the second person. So where that says admin account there, that would be the second person's name, date and time stamped as well. So you've got your archive here is what you're looking for and records of what's been recorded. My action plan is here as well, currently not started, but um, if I wanted to edit that particular action, Steve's done his, or scheduled his training, I can save that as closed as well. So that really is the um, simplicity of the recording or reporting an incident, viewing the incidents and then going through the, the investigation process. You then got a number of um, other features that is administration, like I say, I won't go into too much detail, but you've got control whether you, you can sort of edit as the administrator your list management and I can decide if I wanted to add in, add in different types of injury. Um, you can see here, add a further item at the moment, I've got a minor injury or condition, a fatality, a major injury or condition. These are the, the HSE's wording, as you'll probably notice. If I wanted to add a different uh, option, that can go into the question set from the administration access. But what I'm interested in now is the reporting. So I've been through the end user's process of reporting incident, I've investigated, I've got some administration features which as I said at the beginning I won't go into too much detail but I now want to see what type of reporting information I can get out on the completed and investigated risks. Two types of reports, we've got a query analyzer and a report designer, both of which are extremely flexible. The first um, filter on the um, query analyzer is the incident type. Now these are the six question sets we had at the beginning but remember like I said you can have an infinite number of different question sets if you've got specific information you want to record. I for the purposes of this want to find out the incidents of injury reported by anybody, allocated to anybody, current status, I want to find out all the ones under investigation. Pick an initial date, let's go way back to get some data you can get the date range but I simply want to get a starting date here. If I wanted to add more filters this is where I would put that in and I've got the option here of an all or any so an and and or all filter so I'm going to say any the second filter I want to put in the place is town just for argument's sake the answer was uh, Berwick run the report. Okay, bad example. Um, show the criteria, let's take out that. Let's take that out. Let's do incident with injury, all the ones under investigation. Sorry, I pre-ran the report with a different town. Here we go. There we go, all of the incidents in the system that are under investigation and I can um, pick on the various different incident reference number. It's a demonstration system so every, the, all of them have been reported by admin account but you'll have the different names and who they're allocated to as well. So you can see that they're all there. I can then, should I need to export that to Excel and manipulate the data as necessary. The other report is a report designer. Now what you'll notice here is by simply selecting the incident type it's going to give me every single question in that question set and I can simply add in various different options. So I'm going to pick out, let's do town this time, town, age, gender, injury description, injured parts of the body, just to give you an example, run the report, it's going to throw that report straight into Excel for you, so you can there, there we go, Everybody's seen an Excel report, but these are the, the headings that I've just added in my um, report designer in the previous screen. So that really is sort of sort of brings us back to sort of the, the the various different features of the tool. Um, I don't know if there's any sort of questions going through that process, Chris. Have we have we had any questions? Hi Ryan, uh, yeah, that was, thank you, that was really interesting. Um, we have had a couple of questions that have come through while you've been uh, showing us this system. Um, one, um, which I think you may have covered, but it's probably worth going over again, is uh, can you use this system for incidents other than your normal incident reporting, so the health and safety type incidents? Okay, um, yeah, very much so. It's, as I say, on this sort of page here, 
we've this what we're on demonst- what I'm demonstrating today is, is very much the, the 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 structure of the tool. The content is entirely flexible. So even though we've we've titled these six sections here as they are, instant with injury, you may want to reword this, the the title of it and any of the questions throughout it. And and I think I've, I may have mentioned, but the um, a particular organization they've included things like security instance so that all of their security staff across it's a university actually and all of their security staff when they see this page because they are a member of the security team and they are using this purely for security instance they don't see the rest of the um, question sets because that's not what they're using the, the, the tool for other members of staff can see the, the different health and safety or accident instant question sets but Security can be um, streamlined to only see the question sets that they're required to do. So the short answer to your question is yes, and it's, it's infinitely flexible. Anything else, Chris? Brilliant. Thanks, Ryan. Um, yes, there was one other question, um, which is relating to whether or not the system has the ability to report directly to Riddle. Now, obviously, that would exclude the security incidents that you just talked about. But if it's the right type of incident, can you can you send something straight to Riddle? Uh, again, sh- short answer is yes. Um, it's worth giving you sort of a whistle-stop tour of the history of AMS. What we're looking at here, this is AMS version three. Um, now, when we originally built AMS version one, back about I think it was uh, well, it was ten or eleven years ago, we built it for a police force on the south coast because they were using our DSE um, uh, e-learning. Uh, tool at the time, and they said, "We like the way you do your, your your software. Could you build us something specifically for our Riddle reportables?" So we built AMS version one for them, and it populated automatically the the old F2508 form, which was at the time a PDF. So rather than having to fill in all the information um, a couple of times within a, a tool such as this, and then um, the uh, the F2508 to go to to the HSE. Um, it did that automatically for them. So I've got a, a, a sort of an example here with four um, options at the top of this particular incident. In the example where it is a reportable, um, there's an extra button to the right hand side here that says report to Riddle and it pre populated the F2508 form. Now, AMS version 2 gave the, the uh, gave this system an element of flexibility with the question sets that were being asked, but it still didn't give it enough flexibility to, to, to meet the needs of. Um, private sector, public sector, education, um, different organisations. So we've built AMS version three. Now, in that time, the process of reporting Riddles has, has changed, and as we all know, the, the HSC have got their website. But we have built a, an automatic feature again with the same sort of process that a button pops up on the right hand side here, and that if um, it's an incident with injury, by clicking the button here, it will pre- it will basically send the Riddle directly to the HSC's website. And if you haven't re- haven't included all of the necessary information, maybe you've not included the person's age or something that's, that's pertinent for that the HSE require, it will send you back an automatic um, exceptions report so that the administrator can see that whilst you've clicked the report to rid- or report rid- or button, it hasn't actually been um, submitted because there are some extra elements of information that are required. So, so long way of saying yes, but I just gave you a bit of detail there about how the process works. Hopefully that's answered your question. Anything else at all, Chris? Brilliant, right? No, um, that's it, but I think we're running out of time as well. So um, thank you all very much for tuning in today and uh, listening to what Ryan had to uh, say and show. Uh, and hope to hope you have a good weekend and we will see you next month. Many thanks. Thank you.